verse 3, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, verse 3. We'll start Acts 61. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed. But his father was a Greek which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. And then hold your place in Acts 16. Look at 2 Timothy chapter uh, 1, verse 3. I thank God whom I serve from my uh, forefathers with a pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. See, Timothy got his tears from his mother also. Yeah, yeah. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Mm -hmm. All right, so I want to preach on honoring a godly mother. Honoring a godly mother. Now, the Bible commands children to obey their parents to be obedient to and honor both fathers and mothers. Uh, I think the best home, really, honestly, whether you were raised in a single family home or not, God's ideal home is a husband, wife, mother, father home. And when those things work out uh, in a way that is biblical, it turns out right. Amen. Now, I didn't say the children will turn out right, right. but uh, everything turns out right. It, it for you at the judgment seat of Christ, if you'll do it according to Scripture. All right, so the Bible commands children to be obedient to and honor both their fathers and mothers that their days may be long upon the land. That's Exodus 20 and Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, that command there is the first command with a promise attached to it. That if a child will learn to obey their parents in the Lord for this is right, that child's days will be long upon the land. Mm -hmm. The Bible also commands us in Romans chapter 12 to give honor where honor is due. Mm -hmm. Now certainly there are a lot of unhonorable or dishonorable parents in the world. I have no doubt about it. But we should give honor where honor is due. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with honoring a godly mother. Amen. Yes. Uh, the Bible uh, commands us to do so. This morning, I'd like to honor the mothers in my life, that'd be my wife, Rebecca, and my mother, Carol, and this church, represented by all the mothers here today, and I'd like to do that by honoring a woman in the Bible and preach about her and her life. That is this woman named Eunice, who had a son named Timothy. Hmm. Timothy was a pastor who owes much of his calling to his mother. Her nurturing and guidance played a pivotal role in shaping his spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. This underscores the importance of godly parents in raising the next generation yeah, of is. believers. I want to illuminate to you or manifest to you or show to you or shed some light on the qualities that define a godly woman and mother. I'm going to do that by showing you the life of Eunice here that we have, just a little bit of information we have. I do believe her story acts as or serves as a guidepost for us all to follow. Number one, Acts 16, the Bible says she was a certain woman. She was a certain woman. There are some things about uh, Eunice that is very certain. Number one, we have her hometown. Her hometown. I don't know if she was born there, but this is where we find her. So we will say her hometown is in verse 2, that we're at Lystra. She's a woman of Lystra. And uh, Lystra means uh, to loosen or to set free, to liberate, to distribute, or disperse. That's the hometown, her hometown name. That's what it means. You might want to find out what your hometown name means, but it may not be all that important, but for a sermon... Well, I could dig a little deeper, amen? amen? And I find that her name means, or the hometown means, loosen, free, liberate, distribute, or disperse. Secondly, her heritage. Her heritage is that she's a Jewess. In other words, she's a Jewish woman or girl. Now, this word, Jewess, is considered offensive today. 
and has changed in all your modern Bibles to a Jewish woman. They refer, remove the, the word Jewess and replace it with what a Jewess is. <laughs> How does that help anything at all? You could probably figure out what Jewess mean by the Jew and the S. The S being a feminine, the Jew being a masculine. It is a Jewish woman. But the new Bibles say that Jewess is too offensive. So we'll change it. You know, ladies... If you're going to be a godly woman, it's going to be offensive. It's a modern day society. If you are going to be a godly woman in this modern day society, it is going to be offensive in the nostrils of the modern woman. For so many reasons I'm not going to get into. Thirdly, to keep the H's, the alliteration intact, her happy name. So her hometown, her heritage, and her happy name. Say, so what do you mean? Well, her name is Eunice. We see that in 1 Timothy chapter number 3. He said, the, the unfeigned faith that is in you, uh, Eunice, uh, from your mother Eunice. Say, so what do you mean her happy name? Well, her name resonates with joy and victory. Her name means... A goddess of victory. A woman of victory. That's what her name means. Uh, in fact, the, the, the word nice or N-I-C-E there is derived from the Greek word Nike. Yeah. Nike. You know those shoes that all the athletes wear? Yeah. Just do it. Huh? Yeah. Just do it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I could go places with that. One. <laughs> yeah. Her name, the, the U, in, the E-U in Eunice means good, and the N-I-C-E in the name means victory. So the, the, the Greek goddess was Nike, when that's where you get Nietzsche or Nice in her name. Eunice, a good victory, also a happy victory. So her name is a happy name. Amen. She is a happy name. Amen. She, oh, happy day. In fact, uh, you, you chose 360, uh, 331, but the very next song was, Oh, happy day. Yeah, I know. That fixed my choice. When I looked on thee, my Savior and my God, what a happy day when we got saved. Amen. 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 Well, what a happy victory Amen. we received Amen. the day that we were born again. Amen. What a happy day it was, I'm sure, for the mothers who gave birth to their daughters or to their sons. Oh, happy day that when they saw the child come out of the womb, there was a victory. There. Amen. Amen. Yep. A happy victory, a good Amen. victory. Yep. So the name Eunice resonates with joy and victory because a mother who gives birth is joyful, is happy over that birth. <clears throat> Let me just say this. When you experience salvation, you experience a profound liberation. Amen. Her name means liberate. Jesus said that all who labor and are heavy laden should come to him mm -hmm. and rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. When you got saved, God entangled you. God loosened you like that cult in the crossroads. Yeah, yeah. Remember the Lord says in the book of Mark there, he says, hey, you disciples, you go. And when you uh, go to the crossroads there, you'll find a cult tied up. I want you to loosen that cult. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't you know before you got saved, you are a cult tied yeah. in the crossroads of life. Yeah. Yeah. This way or that way. Either way, you didn't know which way to go until God came by, ladies, mm -hmm. man, and unloosened you, Amen. unshackled you, and set you free, Amen. and then set you on your way to let Jesus Christ be riding on your back. Amen. <laughs> what a blessed day when a woman gets saved. Amen. When a lady gets saved out of sin, yes. out of vice, out of the world, out of ungodliness, out of debauchery, out of herself. She Amen. gets saved and then has a family and then gives birth and becomes a godly mother to raise and train up Amen. godly children. Amen. What a blessed gift, blessed gift that is. When you got saved, God set you free. God liberated us from the shackles of sin and condemnation and now empowers us to dispense, remember her name means dispense, and distribute, remember her name means distribute, the love and the grace and the gospel of Jesus Christ 
to a lost and dying world who is still shackled up in yes. the crossroads yes. of life. Yes. Not yes. sure which way to go. The problem with preaching off your phone is you got all your notifications on. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the triumphant name of victory. Amen. Remember, her name means happy victory, good yeah, victory. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the triumphant name of victory in which we can and should rejoice. Philippians yeah. 4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. That's right. yep. And again, I say rejoice. Can I just say this for godly mothers this morning? When you got saved, there was a rejoicing. Oh, yeah. Amen. And when you had children, there was a rejoicing. Yeah, but it says, yeah. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, yeah. Yeah. you know when that again will be? When you see your children that you trained up and raised up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, when you see your children walking in the Lord, yeah, yeah, when you yeah. see your children serving the Lord, yeah. when you see your children living for the Lord yeah. in whatever capacity that God allows them, and again he says to those mothers, rejoice. Amen. And that mother does and will rejoice Amen. when they see the hard labor and the work and the reward of their labor is manifested in her children. That's right. Amen. Let me say this, even if others find it offensive, women... Mothers or single or widows or whatever, if you live for the Lord and you serve the Lord with a meek and quiet spirit and you love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and you submit yourself to the authority of Almighty God, that might be an offense in the nostrils of this world, but in God's eyes and in God's nostrils, it is a sweet smelling Savior. Savior. Even if others find it offensive in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, even if others find offensive King James Bible, even if the world finds offensive the name Baptist, can I just say that those who possess and know the peace of God are not offended but are blessed? Yeah. Yeah. If you know Jesus Christ this morning as your Savior, you're not offended by His name. No. No. If you are saved this morning and are a Bible believer, you're not offended that I say there's not just one name by which we are saved, but there's one name by which we have our biblical authority, and that is the King James Bible. And there is one name that is associated with the name Jesus Christ and the name King James Bible, and that is the Baptist name of which I will not and ladies you should not and mothers you should not and men and fathers you should not be ashamed to take a stand Amen. for Jesus Christ for the King James Bible and for the Baptist faith Amen. which was delivered once unto you yes. Psalm 119 165 says great peace Perfect. have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Amen. Don't worry about what the ungodly mothers are doing in their homes. Don't worry about the ungodly mothers on Facebook, the ungodly mothers on Instagram, the ungodly mothers on TikTok, the ungodly mothers all over the world flaunting themselves at beaches or at lakes or at movie theaters or across the globe. Hey, worry about being a godly mother. Amen. Amen. Give, the, give your children, train your children with the truth of God. Yeah, Let them hear more witnessing with the tongue than backbiting and backstabbing and, and, and gossiping with the tongue. Amen. Yeah. Luke 7, 23, the Bible says, And blessed is he, or she, <laughs> blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. That's right. You yeah. know what the word blessed means in the Bible? It means happy. happy. Yeah. Hey, guess what, man? Lady, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know the problem with America, a Christian nation, the birthplace of democracy, in the eyes of the world, a mother of freedom, can I say? That godly mother that once stood for truth and for right in the world has now become, uh, in the nostrils of the world, a sweet-smelling Savior. But in the nostrils of God, America, the beautiful, has become America the defiled. And too many godly mothers have been more worried about what ungodly mothers think yeah. of them. And instead of being a sweet-smelling savior and a crown upon the head of the Lord Jesus Christ, she's a shame of Jesus Christ. She's a shame and a reproach to the name of Christ. And she's brought shame to her children and shame to their husbands and shame to her own name. All because she wanted to be accepted by the world. Right, right. What a shame. Not Eunice. 
Amen. Not Eunice. Amen. And I'm going to honor a godly mother because God puts her in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe God will honor you, ladies. You keep yourself in the fear of God. You keep yourself in the love of God. Amen. You keep yourself submitted to the Almighty God. Amen. And you take care and do the best you can to pray for and train up your children and love on your children and by golly, spoil your children. And after they go out of the house, you still do the same things you did when they were in the house. Only you have less control over them. God will honor you Amen. at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Secondly, she was a Christian woman. Not only was she a certain woman, she was a Christian woman. Uh, the Bible says there in Acts 16, 1, uh, there was a certain woman, this, uh, a certain uh, uh, disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman. See, don't give her name there, but you get it in 2 Timothy 1. She was a Jewess, and the Bible says, and believed. Yes. And believed. Which means she was a Christian woman. Yes, right. You can't be a godly mother if you're not a Christian mother. Amen. Does that make sense? Yep. Now the Bible says here, if I'm going to preach on a Father's Day message, I ain't preaching on the husband. I ain't preaching right. on Eunice's husband this right. morning. Right. He don't make for a very good example of a Father's Day. No. The Bible don't give him a name number one, and it looks like he might not have even been saved. Because right. okay. the Bible says, but his father was a Greek, which indicates he might not have been saved. Right. Which means, ladies, this Christian woman, this Christian mother, raised a future preacher boy in the home of an unsaved husband. You get that question a lot as a pastor. What do I do if my husband won't let me? What do I do if my if my husband doesn't like this? What do, what do, listen, Eunice made it. Amen. And she raised a God-fearing man of God that God used Amen. as a pastor. Amen. And Paul wrote two letters to mm -hmm. and got her name in one of those letters mm -hmm. and left the father's name out <laughs> of any letter, of any verse of scripture that I can find. In other words, hey, you can still honor and respect and love your husband even if he's a jerk, backslid, no good, reprobate. You can still make it in the home. Amen. Because you put God first. Amen. You put God first. You can make it. Amen. Why? Because she believed she was a Christian woman. Amen. How was she a Christian woman? Number one, she submitted herself to the scriptures by believing what it said. In other words, she submitted herself to the gospel through the scripture. Mm -hmm. Doesn't the Bible say, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. and thou shalt be saved? Yes. Doesn't the Bible say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? You know what I know about this woman? She believed and called upon the name of the Lord and she got saved. Amen. She submitted herself to the scriptures. Number two, she submitted herself to Jesus Christ through the scriptures. Amen. Listen, it's one thing to be saved mm -hmm. and then do nothing after that. Yeah. It's another thing to get saved and to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only way she was able to raise Amen. a godly Amen. son yeah. is she knew that Jesus Christ was her ultimate head. Yeah, and on earth she had a physical head, but she was only he was only a temporary head in her life. The eternal head was Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And whatever Bible she had, scripture she had, she submitted herself to Christ through the scriptures. Number three, she submitted herself to her husband through the scriptures. You say, I don't know, what did she submit herself to? I don't know, the Bible don't say. All I know is she stayed faithful to her husband. She still stayed faithful to Jesus Christ. She still trained up her child and the way she, uh, he should go. And when he was old, he did not depart. Why? Because she had a humble heart, yeah, a right. submissive heart right out the gate mm -hmm. when she got saved. She got all in is what I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not only was she a Christian woman because she believed by submitting herself to the scriptures, but she was a Christian woman because she guided her house with discretion. How does a woman guide her house with house with discretion? Through the scriptures. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit gives us discernment. God help us to have mothers who will have spiritual, godly wisdom yes. to know how to guide the house Amen. in the way it should go. Amen. 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 Yep. The old saying is, you know, the husband is the head, but the wife is the neck. Yeah. 
Well, there's some truth to that because the woman, the Bible says, guides the home. We'll look at that verse in a second. The husband is the foundation. The husband is the head of the home. But the wife and the husband is supposed to provide all that is necessary if he's doing his part, unlike this guy here. But, but regardless, she guided the home without usurping or overruling or making her husband look bad to do it. How? She just did it. She just did it without making him look bad. She just did it. I, get, I think something like this. She made sure his clothes looked nice. She made sure that he had all the food he wanted. So when it came time to say, honey, I'm taking Timothy to the temple today, he didn't give her a hard time. Because his food was in the fridge, it was ready to go, house was all, you know, whatever it was, and he'd have to worry about nothing, and he just said, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And he's just sitting at home watching the, the sports on television there, whatever they had back in those days, and he's just reading the paper, he's, you know, whatever he's doing, you know, eating Cheetos on Sunday, she's in church, and he didn't care as long as all of his cares were taken care of, and she was happy to do it, why? Because she saw the greater thing yeah, was raising a godly son. Amen. Amen. She submitted herself to God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the scriptures and her husband say, Hey, if I can feed him, if I can keep him nice and cozy, he won't care where I'm at on Sunday. Amen. He won't care if I'm taking my son Timothy to church or not because he ain't spiritual. He's carnal. So I'll make sure all his carnal needs are satisfied. Amen. I believe that. So where do you get that? Proverbs 31. I think she had a copy of Proverbs 31. She probably had it on her refrigerator. She probably had it up on her mirror. She probably had it up on her dashboard. She probably had it, you know, and uh, marked in her Bible and all that kind of... I believe she had it so memorized that she knew a godly, God-fearing woman would look like the Proverbs 31 woman should look. Why? Because all she would know really is the Old Testament. Right, she didn't have a whole lot, if any, of all the New Testament. She might have had maybe some of the Gospels there. She might have had some scraps. Of, but she had the Old Testament, no doubt about it. She was raising her son under that sort of light. Thirdly, she trained up her son Timothy out of the Scriptures. You know what I think this woman realized? She says, well, wait a second. If this is working for me, oh, yeah. Yeah. it'll work for my son. Sure. Amen. <laughs> Lord, I see how you're taking care of me in the home. I see how you're taking care of my needs, my spiritual needs. Uh, I better make sure that Timothy knows as a as a as a boy, because he ain't getting it from daddy. Right. He might learn how to shoot a basketball. He might learn how to throw a football. But she's like, that's not going to get Timothy anywhere in life. If he's going to amount to anything, if he's going to amount to anything in this world, I need to show him in the Bible how to be a God-fearing man. Yeah. In contrast to the grief that she had for the husband. I think she might have got saved, uh, got saved after she was married. And realized, wait a second. I need to give him a better life than I began, that I was raised up with. Amen. I better show him from the scriptures where to go to get the answers. Amen. Mothers, the greatest thing you can do is give your children, ladies, husbands, men, fathers. The greatest thing you can ever do is give answers with the scripture. Amen. Amen. Because it puts into them a foundation of the word of God, the Bible is the final authority. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> Let me just say this, simply being saved does not automatically make you a Christian. Contrary to what many think. Any more than being a handbag makes you a coach or a Gucci handbag. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what other handbags there are, so forgive me. I'm not, I'm not clear. Right. Those two are pretty well. <laughs> Those two pretty well. But you know, just because you're a handbag don't mean you're a Gucci yeah. or a yeah. coach handbag or whatever kind of, any more than just being saved makes you a Christian. That's right. Or can I say, husbands, fathers, men, uh, you may not know anything about handbags like me, but uh, being a car does not make you a Porsche or a Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> or being a motorcycle makes you a Harley. Yeah. Hey, listen, you might be a car, but you're not a name brand anything until you are labeled with it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, the label Christian was put on those that were identified as different than what they've always seen. Right, right, right. Yeah. 
So you might be a Christian woman, you might be a, I mean, you might be a saved woman or a saved mother, but you're not a Christian mother or a Christian woman or father or man unless you're doing those things which identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A label that is. Yeah. Believing the gospel makes you a child of God. Amen. But a disciple and a Christian is much more than that. A disciple is one who is, who is a disciplined follower of Christ, growing and learning as you go. Amen. A disciple is one who is a disciplined follower of Christ, growing and learning as you go. Say so that what's a Christian? A Christian is more than just a disciple. A Christian is one who continues to follow after he or she has grown and learned sound doctrine. A Christian is one who has grown to become a leader while also continuing to grow and learn the doctrines of the Word of God. There's three stages to this, Christian. There's saved, there's disciple, and there's Christian. Now, a Christian will be a disciple, but a disciple may not necessarily be a Christian. A saved person, a Christian will be saved, but a saved person may not be a Christian. Okay. It works like this. In the world there are lookers, mm -hmm. there are learners, and there are leaders. And your job is to find out which one are you. A looker just watches what happens. Yep. A learner learns what's happening. Right. A leader leads people into things that need to happen. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a disciple without being a child of God but you can be a child of God without being a disciple. While a child of God may not be a disciple, you cannot be a Christian unless you are first a disciple. You say, why are you saying that? Because a mother's responsibility is to guide the home. Amen. You know, mothers, what you're supposed to be is a leader. Amen. Husbands, fathers, you're supposed to be leaders. How, ladies, can you be a leader if you're just watching? Right. How mothers can you be a leader if all you do is learn for yourself, but you don't train up or teach the child up what it needs to know to become a child of God, Amen. to become a disciple, Amen. to then become a pastor who could then lead other people? Say, where is that? 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. Look at 2 Timothy 2, 2. If you still have 2 Timothy 1, let me show you 2 Timothy 2, 2. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. Look at this. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. See, you've learned. You've heard some things. What are you supposed to do? 2 Timothy 2, 2. The same, the same things you've heard and learned, the same commit thou to faithful man who shall be able to what? Teach others also. See, that's written to men. Yeah, but it's also ap applied to the woman as well. Mothers need to learn so they can then guide and train their children. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Listen, whether your role is a mother or a father, a Sunday school teacher, a youth leader, a pastor or elder in the congregation, God has called you for more than just watching. Right. God has called you for more than just learning. God has called you to be a leader, especially if you had children. Amen. Why did you have children if you weren't ever planning on leading them? Say it was an accident. Okay, we'll do something about the accident. Amen. <laughs> Learn how to become something more than just an accidental individual. <laughs> Learn how to take care of and train up and teach the next generation so they don't become castaways accidentally. Yeah, I know. 1 Timothy 5, verse 14. 1 Timothy 5, 14. 1 Timothy 5, 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry. And then what's it say? Bear children. Bear children. And then do what, ladies? Guide the house. Listen, lady, these guys, these chauvinistic men, if they're that, who say a woman has no role in the home. Crazy. Whose job is it to guide the house? A woman. Do you ever see that? We need guidance. 
this world is long for guidance. Right. Amen. They lack guidance. You know why? Because the roles in the world have been reversed. That's right. Amen. Holy. Second Timothy chapter one verse five. Watch this. I believe lastly she was a woman of character. She was a certain woman. I think she was very certain, very confident. Uh, she was a Christian woman. She was saved. But lastly, she was a woman of character. Verse 5. When I call to remember the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Where did Timothy get his unfeigned faith? From his mother and his grandmother. What a heritage. Yeah. No men included in the list. Yeah. The mother and the grandmother. And I find that's probably more and more true in the last days. Yeah. Less fathers, less grandfathers have an active role in discipling the children. It is more of the mothers. Because she has a natural desire Amen. to guide Amen. the children. She was a woman of character. She was not fake. That's what unfeigned means. Right. Yeah. Not fake. Her faith was real. Let me say this. She was real. I believe Eunice was real. Amen. She wasn't a robot. Amen. Yeah. She wasn't artificial intelligence. Yeah. She was real. Yeah. And can I just say this? Women, especially mothers, need to be real for their children. Amen. Yeah. Children need to see their mothers as real and not fake. Right. They don't need fake eyelashes. I want to be graphic for a second. They don't need plastic surgery. They don't need embellishments. They need real. They need to know that the husband, their father, married their mother not for her looks, not for who she's not, but for who she is. Because that child will have to grow up and look for love that is real. Amen. Amen. And too many mothers have forsaken the realness Amen. for the fake stuff. Yeah. And those children grow up looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah. Fake, yeah. feigned love. Yeah. They need to see their mothers cry real tears. Yeah. They need to hear their mothers use real words of forgiveness and kindness. Amen. There's nothing worse than a fake religious woman. Amen. I think of Sapphira. Remember Ananias and Sapphira? Yeah. In Acts chapter 5. Yeah. She came in about three hours late to the service. I'm here for church. Strutting like a peacock, throwing money at the at the preacher, you know. Hey, look at all the money we've given to the church. He's like, Did you give it all? Oh yeah, we gave it all. She's like, Where's my husband? That guy sucker's always running late. Oh no, no, no. He was here three hours ago, ma'am. You were too busy getting all your makeup done and hair done. You missed out on the whole service. Oh, by the way, your husband lied to me. He's dead. They rolled him up on a carpet and threw him out in the Potomac River. Uh, did you give everything? the church that you said you gave? Oh yeah, preacher, we're, we're Christian people. We're God-fearing people. God's like, you're dead. Yeah. He, says, he said, what are you doing lying to the Holy Ghost? And that she died on the spot. Mm -hmm. And they took her out the same way they took the husband out and they're both buried in the depths of the sea somewhere and never did find their bodies. Nothing worse than a fake religious woman. Nothing worse than that at all. Can I say this? There's nothing worse than a fake religious church. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 She was righteous. This is not a she did not have a self righteous attitude like Sapphira did. She did not have a self righteous attitude, but rather the righteousness of Jesus Christ manifesting yeah. itself in her character and behavior. Yeah. Can I say this? There's nothing worse than a fake religious church, nothing worse than a self-righteous church. Amen. Lastly, she was respected. She was real, she was righteous, and she was respected. So how is she respected? Well, she's mentioned three times in three separate places. Once by name, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Once by origin, Acts 16. And once by testimony in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Turn over there real quick, 2 Timothy 3. She's mentioned once by testimony. 
Can I just say this? Whether male or female, mother or father, there's more respect for the character of a godly person than an ungodly one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think that if you're more ungodly, you'll be more light. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. The more godly you are, the more respected you'll be. Maybe not by the world, but by the ones that matter. Right. By the brethren, by the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul writes to Timothy in closing. He says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a what? From a child thou hast known the what? The you know what? He, you know what? Timothy got at an early age. He got the holy scriptures, mm -hmm. not from his father, but from his mother. Amen. A testimony that Paul writes about Timothy in a roundabout way. He's testifying to Eunice yeah. Yeah. from Lystra, this certain Christian woman. He's saying, not by name, Second Timothy three, but by testimony. Yeah. Timothy, you know who you learned the Bible from. It wasn't the scholars. It wasn't the, the academics. It wasn't YouTube. It wasn't even your daddy. It was your mother. It was your grandmother. Continue in those things which thou hast learned. And be assured that what you saw was real. It is righteous. It is a respected thing. Let me close with reading you a verse of scripture here. This really hit me hard. When I begin to think about it, I thank God for my mother. Amen. I mean, she's a Eunice through and through. Amen. She is. Yeah. 43 years, she told us the other day she's been saved. Raised three kids. Not easy to do. No. All of us rebellious, still rebellious, all of us. <laughs> Disrespectful, rude, crude. Push back against God, push back against church. As soon as we got to do our own thing, we were gone. Breaks a mother's heart to see that. Yeah. Brings shame to the mother. Brings shame to the father. For the child not to be living a life. Mm -hmm. That is a way in which she raised them to live. Continue when you're out of the home, Timothy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't stop when you graduate. Right. Don't stop when, uh, when you get a job. Don't stop when you become 18, 21, 30. Hey, continue after the house. Amen. Amen. You'll bring your mother and father to an early grave if you don't. Yep. I thank God for my godly mother. I do. Amen. She deserves more honor than she gets. Yeah, amen. I thank God for the mother that God has given my children. Amen. A Eunice in training. A Eunice <laughs> in being in, 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 in progress. Yeah, amen. The jury's still out yet. Amen. <laughs> we still got a long way to go. But she, but she strives for it. Yes, she amen. desires it. She loves it. She wants to be a godly mother. She wants to be an honorable mother. She wants to be a righteous mother. A respected mother. Hey, if there's anything my wife is, she's really Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's real. That's why I love her so much. She's real. Yeah. She tells me the truth whether I want to hear it or not. <laughs> First thing I always ask her is, what did you think? <laughs> if she's silent, I know she's trying to find the worst thing. Real. <laughs> Soften the blow. <laughs> she strives for it. Yeah, and yeah. I know she looks to my mom as, wow, she can make it. She can do it with yeah. three. I've only got two. I can I can do it. Amen. But they'll but they'll both attest to it's not them, it's the Lord That's Jesus it. Christ. Amen. It's the supply of the Spirit Amen. and Amen. trials and Amen. tribulations and sufferings Amen. and heartaches and griefs and Amen. burdens and poverty and, 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 and necessities and abundance and whatever sort of state she was in, she found herself to be content. Amen. 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 And that should be true for every Christian. That's right. Amen. Male, female, young, old, mother, father, widow single, married, unmarried. It doesn't matter. It applies to all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Proverbs 12, verses 2 through 4. The Bible says, A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord. But a wicked man, but a, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. You know why she can say 43 years and she's in it? Because there's righteousness there. Yeah, amen. Righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. But the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Mm -hmm. Now here it is for you ladies this morning, mothers in particular. A virtuous woman is a crown 
to her husband. Mm -hmm. Right, amen. But she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Yeah. Yeah. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Amen. What do you do with a crown? Just show them off. Yeah, amen. But she that maketh ashamed is <clears throat> as rottenness in his bones. <laughs> That's no way to raise a family. Got a house. It's to be rotten. No. In fact, the Bible says you're better off to live in the corner of the rooftop That's than right. a broad house with a brawling woman. That's right. Always yeah. yeah. looking to fight. Yeah. Because you're raising, training children to fight. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, we need we need fighters, but we need we need lovers, amen. Yeah. Yeah. We need we need godly godly girls and godly boys. We need godly mothers. Amen. And so honor where honor is due. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we do thank you today.